So for number one, it says, what is the probability of the spinner landing on the G? So we see that the G is right here. So thinking about what portion of the total options this is. So this is one fourth of the spinner. So the probability of the spinner landing on G would be one fourth. Number two, the spinner shown is spun 1,000 times. What's the best estimate for the number of times it would land on the wedge with B? So we see that this circle is split into six equal slices or equal chunks. So it would be um, the best estimate that it would be expected to land on there one-sixth of the number of spins. So one-sixth of the 1,000 times. So if we did one-sixth of a 1,000, another way to think about that is 1,000 divided by 6. We would get that it's expected that the spinner would land or that the number of spins would be 166.67 that would land on B. So the closest um, estimate to that would be 160. So this is the expected probability, um, and they're telling us that this is the actual number of times that it landed there. Number three, on an assignment, there are two true or false questions. Um, you have no idea the correct answer, so you decide to just guess. So you have no no understanding of it at all, so you decide to guess. So what's the probability that you get both of the questions right? So let's take a look at the sample space here. So the first question we could answer true. Um, and so if we answer true on the first question, our options for the second question are to answer true or false, okay? So the first one we picked true, then the second one we could have picked true or false. If we pick false for the first question, we could answer true for the second, or we could answer false for the second. So here's our sample space. Now only one of these is gonna be correct, okay? So only one is gonna have the right answer. So let's just pretend <clears throat> um, that that correct answer was this. So you have a one in four chance of getting this problem, both questions correct. So then part B says, what is the probability that you would get exactly one of them correct by guessing? So you can't get both of them correct and you can't get both of them incorrect. So if we're going with um, argument sake that true, true was correct, then false, false would both be incorrect. So this would not work because both of them were incorrect and we need to get one. So if the first one is true, this is correct. If the second one is true, this is incorrect. So we'd have one question correct here. If true is correct for the first one, then false would be wrong. True is correct for the second one, then this would be correct. So these two options would get us one of the questions right, exactly one correct. So we'd have a two out of four chance or a one out of two probability of getting exactly one correct. Number four, find the length of an arc with a central angle of two pi over three radians and a radius of seven pi. So there are certainly multiple ways we could do this problem. One of them is using the arc length formula in radians. So arc length is equal to the radius times um, the radian measure. So our radius here is seven times our radian measure of two pi over three. So this would give us 14 pi over three for our arc length, so 14 pi over three units. Other ways that you could think about this is thinking about splitting the circle into radians. So this is pi radians. Okay, so then splitting this into thirds, and now you have two pi over three portion of that. So then we've actually got two sixths of the whole circle if we kept splitting the whole circle. So you could think of the arc length as two sixths, okay, of 14 pi, which would be the entire um, circumference. Two six simplifies to one third. One third times 14 pi would be 14 pi over three. So that's certainly another way that you could look at it. 
Find the length of an arc with a central angle of pi over 4 and a circumference of 10 pi. So now they're giving us the entire circumference of this circle, and they're telling us the central angle in radians. So again, a couple different ways you could do this. So pi over 4 radians, remember, is this size. So that's going to be 1 eighth of your circle. Okay, so pi over 4 is equal to 1 eighth of the whole circle. So we could do 1 eighth of the circumference. So 1 eighth of 10 pi, which would be 10 pi over 8, which would simplify to 5 pi over 4. So that's certainly one way you could look at it. You could also look at that they gave you 10 pi as the circumference, so your diameter is 10, um, meaning that your radius is 5. And then you could have used this um, arc length formula in radians. So arc length equals the radius 5 times the radian pi over 4, and then gotten 5 pi over 4 that way. Um, part C says, find the measure in radians of a central angle with an arc length of 12 units and a radius of pi, or sorry, a radius of 3 units. So we know that our radian is equal to the arc length divided by the radius. So our arc length is 12, our radius is 3, so that means that our radian measure of our angle is 4 radians. Number five, sketch in a circle, or in the circle, sketch a central angle of pi over two. So remember, pi is half the circle. Okay, so this is pi radians. So then we would just split pi in half, and there would be um, pi over two. And if I just bring that back over. Okay, so pi over two would be a quarter of the circle. The circle in the image has been divided into congruent sectors. What is the measure of the central angle for the shaded region in radians? So um, I like to just take half the circle because I remember that half the circle is just pi radians for this half. So I'm going to take pi and let me just cover up kind of the rest of the circle so we don't keep looking at it. So I'm going to take just pi. I know this part is pi, and it's split into one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So one slice is going to be pi divided by six. The other way you can look at that is you could look at the whole circle. And the whole circle, remembering that all the way around um, a circle in radians is two pi. And then you'd count up the number of slices is 12. So you'd be taking the whole circle is 2 pi divided by 12 slices, which then would simplify to pi over 6 as well. All right, the number 7 says select all statements that are true. So the in center of a triangle is the intersection of the angle bisectors. That is true. The in center is the same distance away from the vertices of the triangle. That's false. Okay, the in center is the center of the inscribed circle. So the in center is equidistant from the sides, not the angles. Okay, so that tells you that part C is true. It's equidistant from the sides. In order to construct the in center, all three angle bisectors must be constructed. That's false. All three of them are going to intersect at this point, but you would only have to construct two of them because once you constructed two angle bisectors, you would find, oops, that one didn't look very good. You would find this in center, okay, without having to do the third one. So you only have to do two. Um, and the in center is the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors is false. It is the angle bisectors.